Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. You might have noticed that loads of AI stuff seems to be released almost every day now, with lots of focus around large language models and image generation. Kandinsky 2 falls into the image generation camp and can produce some fairly reasonable images. Sure, it hasn't got all the features of something like automatic 11.11 for stable diffusion, but sometimes it's just nice to try other stuff, isn't it? I mean, variety is the spice of life and all that. As you may be able to tell from the name, this is from Russia, so you may not want to go anywhere near it. As a supporter of Ukraine, I know I was in two minds about even covering this at all, but at the end of the day, this isn't a politics channel, and we're all just interested in the nerdy stuff, right? Okay, the main features include an Apache 2 license, which is fairly permissive, and it's got a whole bunch of features too. If we scroll down here, we can see some things. We've got text to image. We also have image to image. There's some image mixing or image fuse, as it says there, and also some image in painting as well. There we scroll down, we've got some text to image, we've got an in-painting example there, they've got the mask at the bottom, and it's filled that in underneath. Like it says on the GitHub page here, this is sort of a mix between DALI 2 and latent diffusion. I really did get some DALI 2 vibes when using text to image, and that is the feature I like the most out of this repository. The other features I personally classify as a bit meh, but that is just my personal opinion. You may love image mixing, and this is indeed a pretty good implementation of it. There are actually two sets of models, one for version 2 and another set for version 2.1, and if you do download everything, that totals around 17 gig. Personally, I would ignore 2.0 and just go with 2.1. VRAM-wise, you'll want something at least capable of playing video games from 2023, so ideally 10 gigabytes of VRAM or more. 2.1 is actually slightly lighter than 2.0, and for a 512x512 512 image, it used 8.7 gigabytes of VRAM for me. I have no idea if this will work on a Mac, but it does seem unlikely. I also don't have an AMD GPU, so again, I can't say if it will work with one of those either. But maybe if you installed the correct version of PyTorch afterwards, who knows? Do let me know. As with practically everything AI these days, your very best option for performance, ease, and compatibility is to use Linux along with a modern NVIDIA GPU. Other operating system options could include Windows Subsystem for Linux, also known as WSL, or if you really love headaches, then you could use a native Microsoft Windows installation. On the other hand, if you don't want to install anything locally or you don't have the required hardware, then Google Colab may be the thing for you. There's a link there, you click that open, and there you get your very own Linux plus NVIDIA power combo to use remotely for free free and it's very very easy to use as you can see there's just a few cells so you click play on the first one click play on the second one click play on the third one and there is where you type your prompt so in this example red cat 4k photo 768 by 768 and there you get rather a nice picture of a red cat as another option there is also a link there to demo which will take you over to this Fusion Brain demo. So that's another way that you can start playing with this model without having to install anything. If, like me, you are installing this Python app locally, then all you really need to do is run that one command there on your computer and you've got it done. However, I do like to keep all of my Python apps in separate environments. And thanks to Anaconda, that is made really, really easy. If you like separate environments too, but don't want to use Anaconda, then Miniconda or VNV are great options too. Basically, whatever you feel the most comfortable with using is what you should use. We're all about freedom of choice here. In my case, I'm using Anaconda. So all I need to do is open my Anaconda prompt, create a new Anaconda environment, and then I can run that single pip install command in my managed environment. The first command is conda create. I've called mine Kandinsky2 because I'm great at names. 
And I, of course, have already created it, so I'm just going to say no there, but you would say yes. The next thing to do is activate that environment. There it is, Conda Activate Kandinsky 2, and it has changed from base to my new Kandinsky 2 environment. Now I've got a nice new Python environment to install things into. Let's actually install it. There it is, that one pip install command from the GitHub page. Just copied and pasted that from there, and we'll let that run for a few seconds. OK, there you go. You've got the main thing installed. However, this does come with a load of Jupyter Notebooks, as you can see there. So what we're going to do as well as that is also install Jupyter Notebook there. I've got Conda install minus C Conda forge notebook, IPy widgets and also OpenCV. Again, that will just take a few seconds to install. Final thing I found it needed on one of the notebooks, I can't actually remember which one it was now, was Protobuf as well. So a quick pip install of Protobuf version 3.20.0, and that will give you everything that you need to run all these notebooks. Right, if we scroll down a little bit here, we've got the how to use section. Like it says there, check out our Jupyter Notebooks with examples in the notebooks directory. It also has some examples there that you can just copy and paste and start creating your own programs, coding up stuff in your own environment to match whatever your personal requirements are. I, on the other hand, am super lazy. So instead, I just started by cloning this repo and then making a copy of that notebooks directory. On my computer, I keep files organized in a directory structure that I find easy to use, but this may not be a structure that you want to use, so don't worry, you don't need to copy it, especially if your name isn't nerdy. On your computer, you can use whatever directory structure, or lack thereof, is most suited to you. I know it's that whole freedom of choice thing again, you do you, boo. For me, I keep my GitHub stuff here in this directory that I created myself and called GitHub. It's also where I'm going to run the git command from, and I'm pretty sure git comes installed as standard with pretty much every Linux distro nowadays, but if for whatever reason you don't have git installed, then you can just run conda install git now, and that will do it for you. Next up is to run that git clone command, and that will download all the files from the repository. I, of course, have already done that, so I won't be running it now. And we'll instead move straight on to the next step, which is changing directory into that newly created area. So there I am in GitHub Kandinsky 2. Now I've already copied it. Let's just show you the contents there. I've already copied the notebooks directory to my notebooks, but you can do the same if you want to. Now I'm going to say up front, I found notebooks a little bit janky, and I'm going to show you the ones for 2.0 quite quickly. That way you can decide for yourself if you do indeed want to use 2.0 at all. I find these notebooks a little bit janky, so I'm just going to go through them really quickly and only for 2.0. This way you can see exactly how they work and also decide for yourself if you want to use 2.0 at all. Right, so first up, I'm going to change into my notebooks directory, which is just a copy of notebooks. If I show you the contents there, I've just got all those notebooks and also a couple of example images. To run those notebooks, I'm just going to run the Jupyter command with the notebook option. And a couple of seconds, and there it is. It will start up automatically in my web browser and show me all those notebooks there. We'll take a look at the image to image one first. One thing to note is that the default cache directory is set to slash TMP. This is great, however, it does mean that any files you download will get wiped out when your temp directory gets cleaned. Thus, what I like to do is change the cache dir in all of these examples to a permanent storage location. So you'll see that here. I've got the cache directory, and by default it isn't even there, but like I say, it's set to slash temp. So there I have home nerdy GitHub Kandinsky 2 cache, and that I have changed in all of these notebooks. As with Google Colab, you just have a number of cells and you click run, but what I can do here is just do cell and then run all, and that will run all these cells in order. As you can see there, we should have a photo of a bearded man come out at the end. Now, this is doing image to image, and it is image opening that image.png. So let's show you that one. 
that is there. So that's the image to image it's doing. You might be familiar with image to image if you've used stable diffusion at all, but it's basically using that image as an input and also merging it with the text prompt. All right, let's have a look, see what it has produced. Loads and loads of text, it's fine. You can ignore all that because down at the bottom there, we've got a photo of a bearded man. So there it's done the strength 0.85. So it's only changed it a little bit. Number of steps 50. This is all very familiar stuff if you have indeed used stable diffusion. So there, in it image is the one got there. Photo of a bearded man. Like I say, not my favorite function this, nor is anything in 2.0, but there it is working. Okay, moving swiftly on, the next one is the in-painting notebook. Again here, I'm just gonna run all the cells, and obviously I've updated that cache directory as well. In this case, instead, it's done a bit of in-painting, so there's the mask, it's basically the bottom bit of that, and I've in-painted that with a bronze statue. There's the original image, so it's cut that off, changed that, made him into a bronze statue. Not too bad. I do quite like the in-painting a little bit, but still not quite as good as stable diffusion. Okay, so that's 2.0 out of the way. Those are the two things you can do with those. Let's take a look at 2.1 now, but with a slightly different interface instead. You can, of course, install this in exactly the same environment. So here, I'm also in Kandinsky 2, but I'm going to git clone this repo. And there, as you can see from my directory listing, I have, of course, already run that command. So I can just move straight on to the next step, which is changing directory into there. There I am, change directory into the advanced notebooks. Now, you want to install a few extra things here. So once again, you will run pip install minus r requirements.txt, and you'll have to wait a few seconds for that to run through. At the end of that, certainly for me anyway, I also install the font roboto pip package too because it uses that font later on. Now this uses Jupyter as well, but rather than Jupyter Notebook, there we are going to run Jupyter Lab instead. As I did with the example Jupyter Notebooks, I've also changed my cache directory in here. In this case, it's in main.py. So if you double click that, you'll get that file open. And there I have set my cache directory. Now, this is an optional step, but if, like me, you get errors with the font, if you go into the UI directory and then it edits the init.py file, there it is, that's this one here, and then you scroll down to where it says Roboto Regular, and there, as you can see, on the image font line, I have instead given the absolute path to that Roboto Regular TTF font file. Another thing you may like to do is, like me, have this dark theme, so up here at the top, settings theme it's jupiter lab light by default which absolutely blinds me i can't see using that at all so i use jupiter lab dark if you do want to get that nice real-time updating gpu widget then you can uncomment that line and install that but personally i've already got one on my screen so i don't need to just run that cell and then eventually the user interface will appear now do note, this will download a whole bunch of models to start with if you haven't. So the first time, this will take a couple of minutes before the interface appears. And there it is. As you can see now, we've got a whole bunch of sliders and things that you can have menus with and you can make the prompts bigger. So it's an ever so slightly better interface for playing with this. You've also got this image post processing up the top. If you expand that and then expand image saving, if you want to, you can save out all of your images. Now, one problem with this, however, is that the directory has to exist already. It won't create it for you. So do make sure that you create that directory first before specifying it in save path. All right, so I'm just gonna shrink that down for now because I'm absolutely fine with those. We'll take off the save because I'm not gonna save these. And then we've just got the normal interface. Right, I've also got stable diffusion running here as well. So I can do a little comparison of this versus stable diffusion 1.5. And there we are. Hello, good old stable diffusion. All right, so I'll be switching back and forth between these two tabs. Let's start off with something fairly easy. Make this prompt box a little bit bigger. And there I've got a cyberpunk rodent is wearing a top hat whilst dancing on an oak table inside a South London pub in summer. If I do a generate on that one, 
and also on stable diffusion at exactly the same time as well, we can see which produces the best image. As you can see on this one, by default, it does create six images, so we'll have a few to look at. And there we have our, wow, that's actually really quite good. Obviously, the hands are absolutely crazy, but that really is a cyberpunk rodent wearing a top hat, dancing on an oak table inside a South London pub. That's cool. Let's have a look at some of the others. There he is. He's on the table. There's some more tables in the background. So they're, they're, they're all quite similar. They're a little bit different, but they all... They all have a certain sort of feel to them. They all, they're all the same, but he's dancing on the table. All right, let's have a look at Stable Diffusion. And there's Stable Diffusion, and hmm, I don't think that's quite as good, to be honest. I don't think that's quite as good, because in all of these, the rodent is actually dancing on the table. He's got his steampunk hat going on. This one, he's got the top hat, and of course, you know, the hands are a little bit manky, but he's not... He's not really on a table. All right, let's be fair to Stable Diffusion and we'll give it another couple of goes there. Maybe I should increase this batch count slightly. Let's let's pop that up to four. And oh, But once again, you see he's not on the table. He's not on the table. So I'm going to give that one to Kandinsky purely because the rodent is on the table and that's what I asked for. All right, let's try again with another prompt. Let's put this one in. This is This is also going to be a fun one. So here we have a professional photo of a kitten painting a watercolour image of an open cat food tin on a white canvas supported by an old wooden easel. And again, I'll pop the same thing into Stable Diffusion as well and see how both of these do. Let's take a look at this first one in Kandinsky. There it is. It's, it's okay. It's not bad. I mean, the kitten isn't painting a watercolour image of the cat food tin, but it is a painting, it's got the canvas, it's got the easel, it's got the tin, not too bad there. The kitten itself seems to be the painting, so no, again, no. We've got a paint tin rather than a cat food tin and some weird paint brushes at the top. I mean, they're quite good. They are quite good, that, that one's not bad. It's close, it's close, it's close. All right, it's, they're quite good images, but let's have a look at Stable Diffusion. All right, we've got four there and, ooh, ooh. Ooh, I think that one is probably the closest. I mean, the kitten isn't actually painting, but it does have kind of a cat food tin. That's kind of got a cat food tin as well, and that's just a human painting a kitten. I think I'm going to give that one to Stable Diffusion, personally, although I do quite like some of the textures on that. Let's scroll up again and try another one. This time, I've got a moose head emerging from a birthday cake on a metal table in a 1960s style American kitchen. Okay, let's have a look, see how Kandinsky did. All right, that's that's nice and weird. We seem to have a bit of a party moose going with a, a sort of party hat there. It's not quite emerging from the cake, but it still looks pretty cool. Oh, now that one. Yeah, that's a moose cake. That's a moose cake. I quite like the, the sort of shades and the some of the lighting on that as well. It's It's got a certain sort of look to it that's that's kind of nice yeah okay anyway um yeah we've got got more moose there i think i think that's done quite well i think that's done quite well all right let's have a look at stable diffusion here is stable diffusion Ooh, i don't know i don't know that one's quite good but it's made the moose and it's and that one's quite realistic and it's got the moose cut that one's pretty good that one is pretty good but it doesn't have that 1960s style American kitchen theme to it. That's that's more modern. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to give that to Kandinsky, I think, because I like the 1960s style theme it's given to it. It's got the moose. I think I just prefer the, the sort of colour and the lighting in that. It's it's more it's more like what I was thinking about in the, in the 1960s style. Let's try another one to see how well it handles complex prompts. We'll pop this one in. This time we have a full colour, highly detailed, high resolution professional photo of a marble statue depicting a cute mouse wearing a red and white gingham dress and massive dark polished black leather army boots. Let's take a look at this. Do we have any marble statues wearing red and white gingham dresses and black army boots? Uh, yes, yes we do. That is pretty much 
exactly what I asked for. All right, well done, Kandinsky. I don't think you can do any better than that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, the boots aren't quite so black there, but they are there, and I think those are amazing. I, it's going to be difficult for Stable Diffusion to beat that. All right, let's have a look at Stable Diffusion. Ooh, it's, it's close. It's close, but these are more like stuffed toys. And there we've got two. I only wanted one. It's got the red and white gingham dress and the black army boots, but that is not a marble statue. I'm afraid, I'm really sorry, Stable Diffusion, but I'm going to have to give that to Kandinsky once again. Let's drop the batch count a little bit here so we don't have to make so many. And we'll try doing a few different styles. Okay, so here I'm just going to do a portrait of a woman in the style of a particular painter. Let's see how well it has handled that style. Ooh, that's that's quite nice. I quite like that. That's It's got quite a sort of painted texture fit. It's definitely the style. It's got the same colours. Those are pretty good. I do quite like those. I quite like those. All right, let's have a look at Stable Diffusion. Ooh, also done quite well. Whoops, also done quite well. But it's, I don't know, that's tricky, actually. That is very tricky. That's a, I think that's a better representation of the style, but that has more of a sort of textured feel to it. So I don't know. I don't know. That's tricky. That is very tricky. I like both of those equally. I think they've both done very well. That's captured more of the style, perhaps accurately, and that's done more of the painting. So I'm just going to call that even between the two. Now, that's a fairly easy style. So let's try something slightly more difficult. Now, I know I often have issues generating watercolour styles. So let's try a watercolour art style painting of a mouldy sandwich on a park bench. Let's have a look-see here. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. That's not too bad. It's got the sort of watercolour blotchiness to it. Uh, oh, I do quite like those. That's that's the sandwich is the bench. So it's it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit off on the subject. But as far as the style, that one's close. That's got the sandwich on the bench. As far as the style, I think that's done very well. Let's have a look at stable diffusion. Oh, I can already see that's not quite as good. All right. Uh, no, no is the answer to that. I, I don't even really need to look any further. That, that's not watercolor, but it's partly down to the model, obviously. But uh, yes, Kandinsky wins clearly there. All right, let's try another style. We'll do that same thing again. We'll do the sandwich on the bench, but this time in a surreal art style. Now, how surreal is this going to be? Uh, oh, that's quite nice. That's quite nice. I, I do quite like the colours in Kandinsky. There's just something about the, the slightly different feeling it's got to it. That's perfect. That's a, yeah, that's that's a sandwich on a bench. That's a wheel. OK, so it seems like surreal also interprets as dripping, but I like that one. I like that one quite a lot. All right, let's have a look at stable diffusion. Is it? Mm. No. Sorry, Stable Diffusion, you're once again disappointing. I mean, it's nice. It's got the sandwich on the bench, but it's not. I don't really class that as surreal. No, I'm going to give that style to Kandinsky once again. Let's, let's change this up ever so slightly once more. I'm going to do a realistic graffiti art style painting of a mouldy sandwich, but this time it's going to be on a park bench in New York at midnight. How well has it done this time for our graffiti art style painting of a mouldy sandwich on a park bench in New York at midnight? I'm actually slightly stunned by that because that's brilliant. That is really cool. All right, that's that one's not quite as good. That's not quite as good. But the style, the style and the feeling of it. I love those. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. It's that little drippy bits down there. Oh, that's nice. That is a really nice style. All right, let's have a look at Stable Diffusion. Mm, okay, all right. Um, yeah, not as impressed. Sorry, I'm going to give that realistic graffiti art style at night. See, these Stable Diffusion ones aren't even at night. That's that's daytime. That's that's completely Kandinsky. Let's let's go for something really really difficult now. Then this this comes out quite interestingly. So, anime cartoon style illustration of some anthropomorphic happy fire with cell shading and detailed, accurate, nerdy and handsome and high quality and amazing, which is, of course, 
trending on GitHub. So I'm hoping for a bit of an anime cartoon style theme to this. Let's see how these two compare. Anthropomorphic fire, how does it, ooh, that's quite nice. That's quite nice. It's, it's some nerdy anthropomorphic fire. Uh, yeah, that's nice. I quite like it. Got a little bit of a grin going on there. Some some cheeky nerd fire. Yeah, I like like the cheeky nerd fire. All right, let's have a look at Stable Diffusion. Oh, I'm going to be disappointed again, aren't I? It, it's given me loads and loads of faces. And then, I mean, they're, they're kind of fiery a little bit, but mm, that's not really what I wanted. OK, I'm sorry. I'm going to give that to Kandinsky once again. OK, so we've done loads of styles now. We've done watercolour and impressionist and surreal and realistic and anime. Let's try something slightly realistic. How can we go on the realistic here? I've got a high quality, high resolution, detailed, professional digital photo of a Roman soldier. He's middle aged. He has dark hair and there is also a spear. Let's generate some of those and see what happens. So the realism test, how good is it? Uh, it's not bad. The eyes are a bit wonky, but then eyes are a bit wonky in stable diffusion as well. It's it's not too bad. You've got, you know, some, some battle stuff going on there. That's that's not too bad. It's okay. It's okay. All right, let's have a look at stable diffusion. Oh, we haven't got faces there. We've got actual character, so let's let's see there. Um Hmm. That's tricky. I mean, obviously they're a little bit wonky. Uh that's quite realistic. That's quite, I mean, I prefer those again for the style, for the, for the aesthetic of the output. I prefer Kandinsky. The image mixer, much the same thing. Again, we'll just run this cell to have the interface appear after a few seconds. Okay, there it is for the image mixer. Again, you've got the same options if you want to do the saving and including generation text at the bottom. Let's just close that down again. So this is mixing images. So you can mix one or more images there. You can upload one, upload another one and keep adding images into the mix. By default, it has two. So let's just use these defaults and we'll select our little soldier guy. Got a soldier guy there and then Let's also select one of those delicious sandwiches. So we'll select that upload there, pick a delicious sandwich. So now we're doing a mix of our Roman soldier with a spear and one of the sandwiches, mix two images. What's it going to do? I don't know, let's find out. And there you have it, a mix between a Roman soldier and a sandwich. It's sort of taken the, the bench turned that into a chair, although that's a bench as well. And then it's got the sandwich. So it's done quite a good job at mixing. But as with many of these mixing programs, I don't really like the final output. However, one thing you may like is this next video.